Welcome to the Wise Build Bridges. On our podcast today, we are joined by Araminta Robertson, uh, who runs Mint Studios. Thank you so much for joining us, Araminta. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, it's a pleasure having you on. Yeah. I've also got Danny with me, um, who is our head of content. So I'm sure you guys will be able to exchange lots of content fun things. Um, <laughs> Two word nerds. A little bit of intro for our listeners out there who don't know Araminta. So as I said, she runs Mint Studios, which is a content marketing agency that helps fintech companies turn their blogs into a customer acquisition channel by getting them on the first page of Google for high intent keywords. She also run, runs a thousand plus person fintech marketing Slack group. Um, which must be very fun to manage. Um, the Market Like a Fintech podcast and Edinburgh's Fintech Happy Hours. Uh, so plenty to get into today. Um, it's probably worth mentioning, I first kind of like knew you, heard of you, spoke to you at last year's Brighton SEO in October, where honestly, I think your talk was one that really stayed with me and resonated with me because it was, it was kind of exactly maybe where I felt I was struggling as a marketer in terms of like seeing traffic, but not really being able to get that conversion um, through and to really like, how do we as a marketing team really drive leads into the business and bring that kind of ROI as well. Um, I also saw from doing a bit of a dive into your LinkedIn is that we have a few similarities um that you lived in Barcelona I currently live there now what no way. Yeah, yeah 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 I'm actually from Barcelona you're really? from Barcelona yeah. that makes it even more fun should we do you want to do this in Canada, right? is this yeah. <laughs> I think I would be swiftly out <laughs> incredible when did you come over to the UK first then so I'm actually half Scottish, half Catalan. Right, uh, My okay. grandfather was Catalan. My grandmother was French, actually, so it's a bit more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I moved here about 2020. Uh, I, I was born here, but then we left when I was like seven, and then I moved back here. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's funny that you're in, in Barcelona. It's, I'm actually going there in March. So, oh, incredible. Yeah, yeah nice. Um, and also, well, I actually also started in fintech in terms of like my marketing career. So maybe no. that was also why when you were talking, I was like, yes, absolutely. No, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, well, actually, my question to you was going to be how much did you enjoy living in Barcelona? But if you're from there, I think it's a very different question. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I didn't I went to high school there, but not the city. That's the thing. I'm right. From so okay. you might not know I mean off camera or off recording I'll tell you yeah. where I'm from it's like a 40 minute train ride right city okay. center but it's like a little farmer town in the very Catalan in the middle of nowhere um, very cool but yeah it's yeah it's where I go home well that's where my my mom is and right mom is so I go there every so often but it's really handy to have the city right there it's really amazing. for sure what so, a place though yeah, yeah. What prompted then for you, like the move back to Scotland? Because you're in Edinburgh now. Yeah. Uh, well, co in complete honesty, career. Uh, there's mm -hmm. there's more communities here, um, and anyone who's trying to build a business in Spain will tell you uh, how uh, how difficult it can be <laughs> and how complicated. And you know, as a freelancer, for example, you have to pay a, a tasa de autonomo, like a yeah. <laughs> just small things like that is really difficult to to just be a freelancer or, a, or a build a business there and mm. it's just the UK makes it so much easier for and, and there's a few other reasons as well but that was one of them that was probably one of the main ones and yeah just career there's more job stuff opportunities here I would say I mean there's a lot of Spanish people who move to the UK because of that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no for sure um and then so yeah so you you moved to edinburgh and is that so that's also when you founded mint studios copywriting studios yeah i mean oh, i was a freelancer uh before um but mint studios was the freelancing name as well so yes right. let's just say yes um and but the agency didn't really like i didn't start hiring people until about a year ago so that's what 2022 yeah 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 okay nice and so yeah so we so i kind of mentioned almost kind of like in the intro in terms of so your talk at brighton 
uh, was about kind of creating content to bring in leads rather than just kind of focusing on traffic. And I definitely, yeah, I, I related to that because, yeah, my first job kind of within marketing, all of our metrics within the marketing team was to do with leads. So we didn't really look at traffic that much as a, as a metric. It wasn't that vital to us. Obviously, you want there to be a healthy amount of traffic, otherwise you can't really get anything from there. But the more important one was kind of the quality of it and and what was coming, the interactions that was happening on the website once people were there. Um, my The fintech that I was working for was also a B2B, so I think maybe that played a role in, in looking at those metrics in that way. Um, and so, yeah, so I kind of wanted to ask you, do you think that kind of that specific focus on leads over traffic, does that play particularly well in certain sectors or is it something that should be approached in general? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Um, I think it depends a little bit on the type of company and what their focus is in is on so there's no denying in 2023 in the in the tech and fintech sector a lot more companies are focusing on roi because yeah. of they're they're struggling to raise uh and, and funding issues so i would argue that now in 2023 a lot more companies are focusing on that and i've heard time and time again marketing managers or cmos um coming to me and saying yeah we we want to start getting like like you know sqls or, or whatever it is mm. from our blog now from our content how do we do that um or you'll hear content people who also i've heard come to me and they're like oh the leadership team is asking me they want to see leads now what do i do yeah. i don't want to do that so that's i would say it's a 2023 thing so it depends a little bit on market conditions it also depend on what the leadership team is focusing on at the moment so i've also heard from other companies that are like well we're focusing on brand at the moment so that will influence the metrics of the blog as well, or right. no, focusing on ROI, that will also influence it. However, I think my bigger issue is that it's very rare to find people who are looking to get, like to, to generate leads from the blog. They don't realize that they can, basically. Mm. So they just see the blog as a kind of nice to have brand awareness thing. And what I'm trying to push and what I'm trying to argue is that actually you can do so much more than that. And yeah. there's so much potential, there's so much opportunity the blog is a lot more than just a brand awareness thing, which is which is important. Brand awareness yeah. is important, but there's no denying that when you've got the leadership team asking for an ROI and you're you're you know struggling with funding, you want to start seeing results ASAP. And I just want to basically argue that you can do so much more with a blog. Why yeah. not? Like why not? Yeah. When was that kind of I guess point of realization for you in terms of the values that yeah. blogs can bring? Well, I guess there was a couple. There was a few points. Um, as a freelance writer, I was quite frustrated uh, because I felt that I'd write content, you know, for a payment company that was just quite vague and generic. Right. Like it'd be like some predictions post or trans post. And I'm like, who's really reading this? Like, come mm. on. And especially payment topics. No one really reads about payments for fun. Right. <laughs> like, so, I'm not sure even payment professionals do, to yeah. be honest. <laughs> And and um, but then you'd hear advice like, oh, write for a five year old or or write like if it was for your grandma. And it's like, no, it doesn't make sense. Why would I do that? No one's reading this for fun. And also, why are we writing about topics like top tourist destinations in London? Like no one goes to a payment company's blog to read about that. Yeah. And to be honest, I don't think they even go to a payment company's blog to read about payment trends. I mean, mm. I, it's just anyway, so it's being hard to write this type of content. And I was just frustrated because I was like, I know no one's reading this. And I also, I feel like the type of content that we could write, we could do so much more here. Mm. But I wasn't really sure what, and I was thinking, I remember thinking about it a lot, like there's something missing here and I couldn't figure it out. And then there's two things that kind of opened my eyes. One was uh, this agency called Grow and Convert, who have an excellent, and I, I mentioned them in the Brighton SEO talk, uh, but they have an excellent website, excellent blog, and excellent course. And this course essentially helps you figure out, you know, how to get an ROI from your from your blog. Uh, so finally, I stumbled across them, and I was like, oh, finally, someone who you know believes this as well and right. is an issue. And the second thing was a book called They Ask You Answer, which I think is like mm. the bible of content marketing, honestly. And um, and it, it's quite a it's funny because it's not written by a content marketer. It's not written by a marketer, to be honest. It was just a, a sales guy who had a pool company and and started 
writing about educational topics about pools and, right. and how to fix them. And, and he got so much um, success from it just from answering people's questions, you know? Mm. And it those seems so simple, doesn't it? Yeah. When so you put it like that. that. But a lot of companies don't like it because they're like, oh, you know, we shouldn't talk about our competitors or mm. what if the customer then decides to go elsewhere. But we live in the age of the Internet now where the customer in five seconds, they already know more about your competitor than maybe some of the people on your team. Right. Yeah. If they don't know now, they'll know in five seconds. So why not just own it and talk mm. about it? And, be honest yeah. with them? and that, that's what I love about content marketing in general is this it's a philosophy of being transparent of empowering and educating the reader the customer and it, I've written about this before where content marketing is is such a special channel because it's a win win you're empowering the company because you're positioning yourself as an expert you know you're a trusted yeah. advisor but you're also empowering the customer because you're giving them the knowledge and you're telling them look I trust you here's the knowledge now you can make a decision for yourself and we're not going to try and push you to make a certain decision so yeah a long answer but <laughs> no no a really good one and I'm sure I'm pretty sure your team Danny have had those kind of conversations in in the background of like who are we writing for like like sometimes like what is the point of me writing this yeah absolutely and uh, it's it's not a nice feeling or if you're ever writing something that you feel just disappears into the ether right and it's yeah. you know it's what is the point in all of the research that's gone into this blog? What's the point in the execution on this blog? So yeah, I mean, it's knowing exactly who it's going to be that's going to be reading it, and not. I mean, I guess the the problem we faced before is the push and pull element that comes with it, right? Like you want to write in a particular way that doesn't, you know, if you are, if you do happen to be coming across the company for the first time, you like it is an area that you're trying to expand your knowledge on you do want to write in a sort of approachable way, right? I get that, but by doing that, you do run the risk of alienating that more. Your buyer. Ex yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. She's the exactly. person who's going to give you the money. Yeah, yeah. It's so yes, it's, it's definitely an important thing to consider. For sure. And so I kind of wanted to ask like, how, how do you approach that then in terms of like, obviously your focus is on leads over traffic so how does that change the process in which maybe you even kind of acquire customers in the first place and like pitch them for them to really understand what what value you're bringing to them yeah well when you start to when you're helping a company acquire customers the first thing that you need to do is to understand that customer and understand yeah. the product and also understand the company and the market there's so much more to it you have to be so much more aligned with the company because you're helping them grow yeah. so that's why before doing anything we uh spend about a month with the company where we're interviewing different people to really understand okay what well first of all what is the product um who are you targeting who are your best customers why is your product better to other uh compared to other products why would they pick you over someone else mm. what are the customers pain points what why would they search for this online um, so many other questions and, sure. and the purpose of that is to just really put ourselves in the, in the customer's shoes and really what we're trying to understand is what would trigger someone to go online and search for a solution like yours even when they don't know the name of your brand because that's what we're really doing right we're helping with mm. customization of non-branded searches um, so the process is completely inverted whereas a lot of agencies and maybe marketers would start by doing the typical let's look at the competitors put it through an hrefs mm -hmm. get all the keywords and then target the same keywords to us that doesn't make sense because why do you want to do the same as your competitors but also you're, you're then you're not going to differentiate yourself and also that, that doesn't tell you what your customers are looking for not your ideal one anyway so we start off with customer research and obviously because we can't talk to the customer directly yeah, that'd be too complicated at this point although it'd be amazing eventually we do the second best thing which is interview the salesperson who talks a lot to customers all day interview, interview the customer success person do the ceo the product person and really try and get a good understanding of, of what's going on there so that's how we, we usually start those engagements i remember so you touched on a really good point there which i liked which was um you know these organizations are all going to be preaching about the fact that their solution is a, a, a cut beyond you know what I mean? So, like so so much of a differentiator beyond the other solutions that are out there yet that's always you know in many cases the first place you go you're always looking at competitors right like what are they doing how can we outrank them so yeah it offers a 
an interesting way of looking at it, right? And like, if we consider ourselves to be so different, perhaps we're looking in the wrong place. Mm, yeah, I do also think it's 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 very interesting how you say that you interview as well your essentially your potential client because I think one of the things that sometimes agencies struggle with and definitely something that we've seen is like that balancing that relationship kind of between client and agency and kind of navigating that of like of course because you're our client we kind of want we want to please you we want we want you know we want to we want that retention so we're going to kind of do everything in our power to make it work but then sometimes that power in balance can be a bit tricky sometimes to navigate because then what you end up doing is just kind of pandering almost sometimes to clients and to what they want even if maybe you know as the expert that maybe that's not the best thing to do but because they've got an idea of what the best thing is to do then it's kind of forcing your hand a little bit and i think establishing establishing yourself that way from the very beginning saying we're almost kind of go like digging into what you're doing and then from mm -hmm. that we're going to come up with the strategy and we're going to come up with what the best solution is here i think that's a really interesting way to start the relationship yeah i mean um we are specialists what we do and I'm going to say this because I believe it, what we do better than anyone else is help fintech companies, payment companies, so not all companies, but fintech and payment yes. companies get customers via their blog. I don't know anyone else who does that. So it wouldn't make sense for us to work with a client and then they start telling us what to do because we'd be like, you hired us because we're the experts. Mm. We're the only ones who actually know how to do this. I, I, I would love to meet someone else who does, but and, and Grow and Convert do this really well, but they're not in fintech and payments, yeah. right? So we have that background, that expertise of, of fintech payments, whatever it is. Um, and we also know how to create content that will bring in leads and customers. I don't know anyone else who can do that. So that's why... It, it wouldn't make sense for us to do what they just tell us because that's just not going to work for anyone for sure and was that a really intentional thing for you to like i guess niche specifically on blogs because obviously content is so wide ranging yeah. so to just niche yourself in blogs was that something that was really intentional well what's amazing about blogs or, or i guess you could say website content is that you can rank on google and acquire people or customers who d don't know about you right that's yes. what's really mm -hmm. special there's no other platform that really does that they have to have like newsletters they have to have subscribed so they know about you social media yeah. they have to have followed you so that's what's really unique about seo and, and google and that's why that's why we focus on that because we're actually helping with that customer acquisition now that's not to say that in the future we do other types of content but right. what we're really good at is that kind of marriage of seo and content marketing for fintech companies for like the brings an ROI. So it's kind of that unique combination. For sure. Yeah. And even kind of sorry, Danny, did you want to add something there? Um something after. If if it's related, please do go on. Yeah, no, because what I I because there with your mention of SEO, even within that, what I saw from even the mint website was the fact that you then also specifically focus on like pain points. SEO would you mind kind of going into that a little bit maybe to some listeners out there who aren't as aware of what it is maybe yeah. giving an explanation of it so uh pain point SEO is a, a term coined by Grun Convert I didn't uh come up with that but basically it's a short way of saying we're targeting keywords that indicate that someone has a problem and they're looking mm -hmm. for it's yeah. really that but quite quite simple and we on our website we kind of break down usually what are those mm -hmm. keywords they're like Usually these are like alternatives to, so let's just say, I don't know, alternatives to, I always use payment companies because that's yeah. what, we're, um, what we're like familiar with, but I don't know, alternatives, um, alternative payment gateways or alternatives yeah. to Stripe, someone who's not very happy with Stripe. Sure. Uh, another one might be comparison articles. You've got mm. uh, like zero versus free agent comparing two different accounting tools. Another one might be the, the best of articles, someone who's comparing different payment gateways or accounting tools. Mm. Uh, then you've also got use case blogs, which is someone who's looking up like how to set up an accounting platform or how to, how to start using a payment gateway. Uh, and then the last one, well, pricing pages are a big one, like talking about pricing, that's a really big topic. 
Um, and yeah, so these are kind of like the groups of, of topics that you could say are kind of, I call it now bottom of the funnel, but it just indicates that yeah. someone already knows what their problem is, already knows what the solution is and, and is actively looking for one. That's the kind of people that we're targeting with this. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's not at all about kind of creating awareness or any, like as, yeah, that kind of top of the funnel of like, generating interest and all of those I mean, bits. I think you could generate interest with bottom of the funnel because mm -hmm. essentially yeah. it, it's because that person maybe doesn't imagine we're working for a free agent they're an accounting platform um and imagine that this target customer doesn't know about free agent but they look up online zero versus quickbooks yeah they're a perfect customer because they already are looking for an accounting tool but they're not aware of free agent and so right. what we do is we piggyback on that keyword and we'll put something like, you know, uh, zero versus QuickBooks versus free agent. And then suddenly they read the article and they're like, wow, this is a really good comprehensive overview. Mm -hmm. I kind of like this company. I'm going to check it out. So you, you are creating awareness. It's just for people who are a lot more likelier to convert. And we would argue, why not target them? This is like bottom of the, sure. these are like low hanging fruits, uh, people who are, who are ready to convert if you're not targeting these people you're initially leaving customers on the table so that's why yeah. we like to start with this kind of content a lot of people start with top of the funnel and then work their mm -hmm. way down but that doesn't really make sense right if you're looking for Absolutely. asap mm -hmm. why not start with those who are ready to convert and then work your way up we're not saying never do top of the funnel it's just it makes more sense to start at the bottom and then work your way up Mm. Yeah, it's interesting to look at that way. It doesn't always have to work through every stage of the funnel, right? Like the, depending on where the potential customer is at, they they could be good to go. And you know, this in that case, this is the perfect kind of type of content for them. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, very interesting. Did you want to add the? I was well when we because you you mentioned that um, it's your background, right? Like it's fintech. You guys live and breathe fintech. But I wanted to ask about. Um, Obviously, the interviews you mentioned do sound comprehensive, you know, like there sounds like a lot of brain picking with the client. Is it in your hiring processes, then let's say, is it always imperative to have that background or nope. do sometimes those um, the, those interview processes do the job? Wait, do you mean so in a uh, hire for our agency? You mean? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we found, it, it depends a little bit on, um, so we have one client that is payment orchestration, which is quite technical. And there it does, uh, the writer who helps us with that is uh, a FinTech founder himself. So mm -hmm. he has background. And um, and for those, so if we were to work with payment companies, then yeah, it would be someone who, who, who's, who has experience writing about this because it, it does help. For something that's a little bit less complex, um, no, they do not need to have background because what we found is that that can be taught. I mean, if you're a very curious person, and as long as you're slightly interested in finance and fintech, then you can learn. What's harder to teach is clear thinking, right? Yeah. Thinking clearly about, okay, what are the pain points? What are the specific features of this product that someone would care about? What are the benefits? That's really hard to find uh, in, in people. Um, and we found that for this type of content, that's the kind of person that we need. And, and so it doesn't really matter if they don't have a background in fintech. Okay. I think what's also quite uh, hard to find is the, you know, that love for the craft, right? So what, what we, yeah. like any any recruitment process we go through, you know, we'll have um, people apply, they have their specific interests. Like I love writing about music, let's say, let's I love writing about lifestyle. That's all great. That's well and good. I can see you've produced some fantastic pieces on that in the past, but what about those things that aren't of interest to you? Mm. You know, like, it, do you approach that with the same level of enthusiasm, enthusiasm, the same level of passion as you would, you know? And that that doesn't just go for interest; that goes for experience, right? Like, you know, previous industries that you might have, may have written for. So, yeah, it's like always like that. That's something that we always look for. That craft. I think, like, what what I go, what I look for is the the fascination for what makes people tick so mm. i think we, would, we had a, a team meeting a couple of weeks ago and we all agreed that what we all love is kind of understanding like it's kind of like psychology what yeah, makes absolutely. someone read an article and then convert like to me that's fascinating and i could I, I can't get enough of it so it doesn't matter if it's payments it could be the most absurd um specific topic on the planet if i can just understand what would make that person tick then 
I can't, you know, I, I just want to keep mm. learning. So that's what we found is in common with the people that, that, that like what we do and that work with us is that fascination for customer acquisition for, and I can see myself, like, I don't know when you're a marketer, this happens, right? When you're shopping for stuff and you're, you're walking around shops, and you're like, what made me interested in that? And all that yeah. kind of that's, what that's what we're like. We're just fascinated by what makes someone buy stuff. And that's really, if you're fascinated by that, then that and clear thinking is a perfect combination, I would say. Yeah, I've, um, I've been having conversations recently around like, I thought everyone did this. <laughs> when I'm on the tube, I'm, you know, analyzing the copy on. Yeah, yeah. And, I'm, and I'm like, you know, I, I thought it was the most normal thing ever. I'm like, speaking to someone like, oh, do you notice what they've done there? The things like this, and they're just yeah, like, why are you staring at these ads? It's just like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I I think I mean I I do that a little bit, but I'm def I'm definitely I'm not a content expert in any means but I think I do it more for like translations of things I find mm -hmm. really interesting like let's say like how a film like in one place it has a certain title and another country has a different one like I always find that really interesting mm -hmm. I feel like it, it has so much so many the like cultural changes, doesn't it? It implications film yeah yeah I feel like I saw that reasoning but I can't remember what film it was I remember just being like, that's a completely yeah. different title. And yeah, so there's those things are always quite interesting. In terms of actually talking about, I guess, across border, are you mainly working for kind of Engl or like English speaking companies? Like, are, or are you also working across languages? It would be amazing to work across languages, but I mean, I would say writing in English is already difficult. So <laughs> doing it with, um, you know, as I said before, I what we're trying to do is be the best at one thing. And I, yeah. I'm just going to keep it to English at this point. And as I said, like already writing clearly well in English is tough. Multiple languages are oh, really hard. And I'm not a great sp writer in Spanish. So, yeah. But one day it'd be cool. I mean, I think partially what, why uh, some of us maybe are really fascinated by what make people tick is, is growing up in, in a multicultural household. I always mm -hmm. find it interesting why... Why would my dad act in a certain way and my mom in a different way? Because they're both from different nationalities. Yeah. Then I moved a lot um, growing up, a lot of different countries and a lot of different languages. And it was so interesting how, why would someone act differently, speak, and, and how in Spanish this sounds like this, in French it's like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's partially also why I think maybe people who grew up in that kind of environment are more like interested. And um, funnily enough, nearly everyone on our team is in, in like a different country. One's in Italy, one's in France, one's in Spain. So maybe, maybe there's something there, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 no, definitely. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that. My my mum is French as well. So there's yes. definitely things where, yeah, you notice like the difference of reactions to certain things or, yeah, um, that, is, that, that is really interesting. Um, Danny mentioned earlier AI, so I'm, I'm going to dig into <laughs> yeah. it. Um, obviously, chat GPT at the moment is like all the rage. Um, I am going to put a disclaimer out here that we are filming this at the end of January. Um, so it's topical. So, it's topical. So, yeah, so it might be quite interesting when yes. the episode does come out where we're at with chat GPT. Yeah. But um, yeah, you did also recently publish a blog on AI copywriting tools yeah. and their impact on the content industry. Um, what sort of impact do you see kind of AI tools having on content mm -hmm. like now and in the future? Well, I kind of really explained it all in the article. Um, and basically, I, I think it's a good thing. Um, mm. And, and it's, it's really simple. The reason is because I'm hoping that it will essentially weed out all the bad or average writers who mm. give content marketing a bad name. Mm, and maybe you'll see a bigger difference between AI content and really great writers. So that will allow what I'm hoping essentially is, is more respect to people who, because I mean, this is what irritates me and probably everyone who's a writer is that people think it's easy, right? And anyone who works in marketing, video production, these kind of industries, um, every, no one takes you seriously mm. uh, because, and I think with writing it's because really good writing is easy to read and it therefore it looks yes. easy. And then also the fact that, you know, anyone can write, right? You just need a laptop and a Google Docs. Um, and, but, but it's hard writing is so hard good writing is so hard because i've hired people and i've read a lot of samples and there's a lot of like bad stuff out there so i'm just hoping but i could be wrong to be honest i'm just hoping that 
this will basically elevate the great writers and give them the more respect that they deserve, really. So that's kind of why I'm excited for it. But to be honest, I could be wrong. So we'll see it, I guess. It's definitely, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of early to say at this point, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, exactly. it's, I think it's one of those things that personally, I wanted to hate. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel like my um I don't know if it's just like some false integrity and like as a writer, I was just like, oh, could this really be done by a robot, etc. And I think it was almost like my appreh apprehension to the um using a Kindle. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it's just really? like I'm old fashioned in that like, oh, let's smell the pages and things like that. But yeah, that is silly. But um I think I've changed my mind on it since. I, I think it is fantastic. I, I'm not just talking about ChatGPT here. I mean, there's like a, a wealth of AI related tools that, I'm, like, that people are using for content. Um, I think possibly the most important thing to consider is that the uh, the output is obviously only as good as the input. So if it, mm. it's not a quick fix in that, I think you need really need to learn how these things t in a very similar way right like to what as we were talking about earlier if you learn how in the specific specific case of chat gpt if you learn how it ticks you're going to get the best results yeah right so as long as all a human is always involved and um yeah the apprehension is is a bit of a strange one not just from me i mean obviously a lot of people feel the same way but we don't really feel as apprehensive to numerous other tools that we use on a daily basis that if not use ai use very advanced technology technologies right so i guess what i'd like to ask you is what do you think it is about content like actual written on a content written content on the page which was produced by an ai that is such a contentious talking point yeah well i mean i think well i also say this in the article um i think very few people i mean would you rather pay, you know, a hundred pounds for an average article or pay zero for an AI to write the same standard of article? Well, obviously zero. Mm -hmm. So it's going to kind of maybe weed out, as I said, like the average writers and, and writing has become like this side hustle thing. And I, I, once yeah. again, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I totally respect that. But it's just, there, there's no denying that it has had an impact on the overall content writing industry, right? Because when you've got a lot of people who just do it for the money, they are just going to do the minimum amount of work. And I'm not saying everyone's like that, but there's a lot of that, right? And that's fine. But I just think that it's contentious because a lot of people are going to be out of a you know, side hustle, basically, or maybe even a job. So okay. there's that. Um, and then also it's completely... You know, people who are really into efficiency really like that. So this is why I think I'm not worried about it is because, well, for us, I, I would divide people into two camps. And this is really over generalizing it. But anyway, people who are seeking out maximum efficiency and people who want the best. Right. And in my mind, we want to work with people who want the best, the best type of content. The, the one that brings in the best ROI, whatever that means, it could be, mm -hmm. it could be awareness. And the people who just don't care and just want it to be the cheapest and efficient yeah if someone is the efficient camp i don't want to work with them anyway so go on go use your ai tool that's great for you but i don't want to work with you even if ai tools didn't exist you wouldn't be a good fit for us so in my mind i always want to be in the best camp so mm -hmm. i think in your mind if you want the best writing the best content you're not going to use an ai tool right so mm -hmm. why i'm like it depends on who you are if you're looking just to you know cut costs and keep it super efficient then yeah but then that's just a different different industry for us yeah i mean yeah when you think about it there's lots of industries that you can see it working for right and i think especially yeah. if you're not everyone has the luxury of of having a team or having someone right. solely dedicated to content and it's like you can definitely see the benefits for some people and i think it's almost worrying in that do you really have that liberty to say I'm not going to go with this because I don't believe in it. Like for these these particular industries that I'm talking about, I, like as you've uh, per, very accurately uh, explained, I don't it, I don't really think it would work for the the, the type of industries that you're, that you're operating in. But for these other industries, you kind of have to use it, right? Because it's like if it's, are you talking well, about it, perhaps I I could be anything. I look. I can see it working for e-commerce, definitely. Like absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
So you mean like copy on a product page, that kind of thing? Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. And if you're, yeah, like if other people are doing it, like you, you're going to want to keep up, right? So it eliminates that thought process. Like I no, kind of need to do this to keep up with the rest. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe another dimension to it. You're right. We've talked about efficiency and the best, but then the other thing is strategic. Uh, and the reason mm -hmm. that I, I, and I could be wrong, but um, I don't see an, an AI tool replacing what we do is because the type of content we do is very strategic. We're trying to basically, I mean, I don't see how an AI could understand, I mean, not even humans understand customer pain points mm -hmm. and then what feature or benefit they would prefer um, and then target yeah. that. I mean, so in my mind, if you're trying to write strategic content that has a specific purpose, but you know, who knows? I, I, honestly, AI can always surprise us. But at this point, yeah. I mean, a, an AI tool isn't going to write an article that that succinctly expresses, yeah. you know, well, or, or succinctly targets specific customer pain points, talks about the right features and benefits, and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So maybe it's an, there's another component of, of strategy to it. Strategy is the ultimate create is, is ultimately very creative right that's yeah. what strategy is so I yeah mean, would, you, would you ask an ai tool to build a company for you no uh, yes uh, i think yeah direct instruction works perfectly you know yeah. and that's well perfectly i mean, might want to call it perfectly in that you know it's still written by an ai but yeah there's as you say there's so much creativity to that there's so many variables that would affect yeah. the output um so yeah you're right that's it's not a match made in heaven. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I'll, I'll be the first to say that I didn't think that design and art and writing would be the first to be like seriously, you know. Yeah, with by AI. Yeah, and I thought I think that's really fascinating. So once again, I could be wrong. Who knows? In a year or two, what happens? But I think it's really interesting. What did you think out of interest? Well, I mean, I I was never worried. Right. Yeah, yeah, like. I, I mean, what we do is really difficult. I mean, it, it's very hard for us to do, so. Yeah, in terms it. of like finding like the, a formula, like making it formulaic and yeah. Yeah, so I was like, okay, this, but it was a lot of fun, obviously. We, yeah. uh, my partner and I used it to try and make cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. We were literally having that conversation earlier today. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, it's like. A, and they were like, disgusting, unfortunately, but maybe it was the input, to be honest. So maybe not, that was our fault. But um, <laughs> it's, it was a lot of fun. I think it's great. Um, but because it's going to, it's going to, it's, it's innovation and it's going to produce a lot of interesting ideas. So I think it's a good, good thing. And also, there's no way we can stop it. So there's no point in trying to attack it or mm, I don't know. Yeah. What, what, do you, what do you want us to do? Right. Let's just embrace it and see what we can do with it. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, before we finish, I do want to briefly kind of discuss um, the FinTech marketing hub that you're involved with in that huge Slack channel um, <laughs> that we mentioned. How did you kind of like first get involved with that? Because you're also kind of like you're a partner, editor, author, like all rounder really when it comes to to that hub. So like, how did you get involved? Why did you think it was important? Yeah, I mean, uh, Annie is a friend of mine, and she uh, she is a fintech marketing consultant. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think two years ago, she reached out to me because we're both, you know, in similar markets. And she was like, let's let's work together somehow. Uh, so I started a podcast, uh, and that was a lot of fun. Um, but it was it ended up being quite a lot of work. Yeah, uh, so that's why we've put pause on it at the moment. But um, yeah, so we were, you know, we've been kind of there's a lot of communities and, and a lot of content on fintech and there's a lot of community and, and content on, on marketing but nothing that does both and right. so i knew and i were just trying to fill a gap really because uh, it's also quite a new industry so mm. uh, that's why we started the podcast and then eventually you know i'm part of quite a few slack communities and i really enjoy them so we were just like why don't we start one and i think it's been a year and a couple of months now um and it's it's been a lot of fun uh it's really nice i think uh, the feedback has been it's just really nice to find other people in this industry and then talk mm -hmm. to them and know that you know you're not the only one with this issue um yeah. and um and yeah and that's pretty much it. I, so i don't i don't really run it i maybe should have changed that wording uh we did set it up but it kind of takes care of itself so it's actually not that sure. much right people just ask questions and, and stuff um, we want to do more in-person events, so I do I do events here in Edinburgh, but I'd love to do, they're not on fintech marketing, they're just fintech, but I'd love to do more fintech and marketing events in London maybe, but it's like, 
have to organize all that and we'll yeah see. We'll see yeah happens. from afar yeah. sometimes it's a bit yes, not fun. fun great <laughs> amazing um okay well before we finish i always like to close with like a little game make it a bit lighter um and also get to know you maybe a little bit better from a more kind of personal side so um this kind of game prompts essentially um i want to know what like your go-to's are with specific things um danny do you want to get involved with this one yeah I would love we'll to. We'll get you involved. Okay, cool. Okay, so the first one is, what is your go-to snack? <laughs> oh, my God. Um, mm, I like cheese and crackers. Oh, nice. Classy. <laughs> or olives. No, I'm yeah, nice. Very nice. Mediterranean. I like that. What about you, Danny? It's going to say hummus, but I'm not... <laughs> It could be anything, you know, it could be yeah. cans, it could be bread or some sort. So, yeah, hummus, I think, is a staple. I love nice. that. Next one is, what is your go-to holiday destination? I don't know. Are you supposed to have a go-to one? Um, I don't know. Maybe your next holiday destination then. I think I love going to in, uh, on holiday in Spain just because I, yeah, I know yeah. the language and the people uh, and I love exploring new parts of it. So, yeah, yeah I'll just say Spain. Yeah. That's a good one. What about you, Danny? I feel like I've got an idea. Well, I think you've seen me in Barcelona <laughs> enough times. You know that. Yeah, I, I love Barcelona. I think it's nice. uh, a great place. I sometimes don't give Noemi all the notices while I'm coming and then just oh, go, yeah. hey, I'm in. Uh, we're at the International Search Summit uh, a few months ago now, yeah. Barcelona, which was fantastic as well. Uh, but yeah, good place. Love it. No, I can't speak Catalan. A little bit Spanish. But maybe you can help me out. Um, go to film. For for what? For just relaxing. Yeah, for relaxing. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah for relaxing. I I don't know. Um, I think I'll just say a TV show because I don't really. Oh, yeah, go for it. But I like The Office. Uh, yeah, the UK or American UK. one? UK. Oh no, sorry, American one. American yeah. one. Yeah. Um, what about you, Danny? I mean, I think relaxing is possibly not the right way to describe. One that makes you feel happy inside. It, Again, it's a strange one. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's the only film that I, if it's on, I'm just. You're I can watching see it. it a hundred times. I still watch it. Scarface. What a film! Uh -huh. But it's not very relaxing. All light and fluffy. <laughs> Maybe this is an insight into. I mean, <laughs> um, what is okay? Next one. Go to like author or book, whichever comes to mind. Ooh, many. Um, particularly topical <laughs> i'm currently reading nasim nicolas taleb i know he's very controversial but i think he has some interesting ideas um so I go to at the moment i'm I, he's got quite a few books so i'm kind of right. like them yeah you're working through them yeah exactly uh i'm quite into my classics to be honest and i won't pick a particular one probably george orwell really like george orwell yeah, yeah. as well nice um go to podcast and you're not you don't need to say <laughs> the wise girl <laughs> well, um, yeah these days i've been listening not stop to two bobs it's uh right. an agency podcast uh with blair ends and david baker uh and it's very fantastic it's, it's fantastic so i okay. listen to that a lot great what about you danny I'm not actually the biggest. You're like, not a no, podcast. On yeah, a you're podcast, on the podcast. But I feel like <laughs> in terms of listening, I'm not the biggest podcast guy. Um, I, there's, a fun, I mean, there's a fun one that I listen to. It's not an uh, industry-related one. It's Hip Hop Saved My Life. Oh, that's the a good one. With one. That is a good uh, one. Yeah, good. I enjoy that one. Um, so, yeah, I'll go with that. Um, If you do listen to music when you're writing, what's your go-to mm -hmm. What, what what do you listen to when writing? Yes, so uh, sometimes I do, and it's a synthwave. I love synthwave music. I don't know if you've really? heard it. I, I got really part of lo-fi hip hop. I couldn't yes. more. Oh, wait, you, you say you didn't like lo-fi? No, I'm so tired of it. Well, I think I, I just you know I studied with Rinse it. In it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but synthwave is amazing. It's like a nice mix of like it's got beats techno which is what i think mm -hmm. and then and then it's still melodic and it's very nice really relaxing 
Nice. Yeah. I'm assuming without words. Yeah, without words. Yeah. yeah. I think it's pretty... What, what about you? Um, I do like lo-fi. I like lo-fi a lot. Um, I also like kind of like minimal techno, like... Yes, uh, me too. Um, <laughs> Or like progressive house is good but like here's <laughs> how do you feel about dark academia <laughs> not her, not her you know it's like look it up on youtube or tip tiktok <laughs> it's literally like you're in an old library uh cool. reading all the dead of night it's quite like gothic it's, it's <laughs> interesting like go, go give it a listen we'll help you out. <laughs> yeah do you know what i the other day i i did have some some writing to do and so i was like okay you know i guess i'll listen to the, the lo-fi beats or you know those kind of like study playlists yeah. and i realized i actually really can't do it when it's just instrumentals i can, really? yeah i need a lyric but ideally songs that i don't know so it's yeah. like i can do like an acoustic Nice thing yeah. or like i'll go on to like my discover weekly playlist tends to be quite helpful because i do i i realize i i need um, stronger background sound yeah but not ones that i know so well that i'm then just singing the lyrics a lot <laughs> like alongside yeah, yeah. But... well people do say lo-fi is quite sleepy and can put you to sleep but yeah. i don't know i just find it frustrating like i'm i'm waiting for someone to start <laughs> like singing like or like, just, i'm like yeah. when does this song start or finish yeah. like yeah it's just that I, I think like once you've heard all of the songs hundreds of times off the lo-fi then you're like okay and i need a I need something different I so i think i've just heard all of them too many times and i'm like the same will happen with since wave probably <laughs> it's, it's all right you've got some time yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, last one then. What is your go-to industry event? Um, well, I mean, right, the COVID just ended. Well, mm. ended, I mean, yeah. Ended, but anyway, uh, they've, <laughs> uh, events have just started again, so it's only been a couple of years. But um, well, Brighton SEO mm. and probably FinTech Talents Festival. Um, mm. But I'm hoping to go to Brighton SEO again. In of this year so i don't know if you are yeah you, you can definitely find us there. amazing yeah, yeah. Go find you. <laughs> <laughs> it's great for sure for sure nice well that wraps us up honestly thank you so much Aram. it's been a really interesting conversation i know that danny has really enjoyed talking to another content person <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming on it's it's been fantastic you know, getting to know you a little bit more more about what you do and yeah it's been a pleasure so thank you very much well, thank you both, uh, Noemi yes. and Danny, and hope to see you in, in person soon. Yes, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Before we go, is there anything you would like to plug? Website, yeah. um, mintcopywritingstudios.com, and you can find me on Twitter at mintcstudios, at mintcstudios, and on LinkedIn. And Perfect. Happy to anyone. Great. Thank you so much. Um, as usual, when I close, I always like to remember our listeners to make sure they're subscribed, that they've got their notifications on, um, and to look out for the next episode. You'll see it all over our socials, which are at Viaductgen on Instagram, Viaduct Generation on both LinkedIn and YouTube, and at Viaduct underscore Gen on Twitter, just to make it fun. Um, thank you once again, Araminta, and I'm sure that we'll see you soon. Thank you, Araminta. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.